I really want, I want to start out, I've got a couple of uh, notes. I wanted to start out first of all to, uh, and express my gratitude, thanks to, to Sherry and to, um, to Shaney for inviting me to do this. Um, it was a little bit out of the blue, uh, a little unexpected, but I'm really excited to be here. Um, before I start though, uh, I don't want. I, I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not really politically motivated. But I got thinking about this, and I and I I uh, I want to put a little bit of a shout out to the to the women of the of the group. Um, in my career, hey guys, in my career, um, I I'm a software engineer by trade, and we don't have a lot of uh, of women uh, that I've had the opportunity to work with in, uh, over over the last couple of decades. And so I, at the risk of sounding uh, a little politically incorrect and hopefully not uh, inappropriately, I, I really uh, strongly encourage you guys to really pursue your dreams. Um, you know, we talk a little bit about this idea of a, a disparage, um, a difference in uh, salaries between men and women, and, uh, and I find that very unfortunate. Um, I think that uh, women bring a very unique uh, vision to the workforce that uh, we as men, as sexist as that sounds perhaps, that we as men really have never taken advantage of and have underestimated. So, so uh, gentlemen, I want to throw down and uh, encourage you that throughout your life that you, you're mindful of the people that you work with. You're going to have opportunities to employ people. Uh, you'll have opportunities to manage people, treat them fairly. Uh, especially when it comes to their quality of life and their and the opportunities that they that they want to pursue and and ladies it, it is a little bit of an uphill battle and uh, I don't know if I'm going to get crucified for this or not on YouTube YouTube but keep fighting keep uh, keep working hard um, my dad used to say in in uh, in uh, life you don't get what you deserve you get what you negotiate and that's just as true for everyone so uh, don't ever underestimate your ability and what you think you're worth because you're worth a lot more than what a lot of people tend to want to pay you or reward you so um, so I know that's a little lopsided but uh, uh, truly um, I appreciate the women in my life I have four daughters and one son and uh, and so yeah I'm, I'm very very excited to see that the over the over the course of my life, the diversity in the workforce. Um, if you, I know you're all communication majors and stuff, but if you have friends that want um, that to enjoy coding, sign them up. We we need we need as much help as we can get. Um, okay, so that was enough of that. Um, I can get off that. Uh, I can get off of that platform or pedestal or whatever. Okay, so what I'm supposed to talk about today is how to turn your hobby into a career. And as I started putting this together, and last night I was kind of going through it with my wife, and I'm like, oh man, you know what, this is really, I'm not sure if I'm, if I'm really nailing this down the way I want to, or, or maybe the title is um, off a little bit, because what I'm going to talk about today isn't just necessarily about what you're going to do with your hobby, but it could go into interest. I mean, I, I don't know if the, I don't know if this this title is going to work for me or not. So we'll just kind of play it by ear. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and start. Does that work? Okay. So a little bit about me. Oh my! My wife's like, oh, they're going to love this picture, and I didn't get any response at all. So I guess I'll, uh, yeah. that's that's me. Yeah. Yeah, you're the man. Cody Adams, thinking out of the box since 1966. So yeah, I'm a little old. I've been around the block a little a, a few times, and I've learned a, a lot along the way. Um, I live in Mona, which is in Juab County. It's uh, about 40 miles south of here. Um, as uh, Cindy mentioned, I, I have a little bit of a hobby farm. How's that for a plug-in for what we're talking about today? I also lived in uh, Stockton, California. My wife is from Tracy, so I enjoyed eight years of uh, the beautiful state of California. I loved almost every minute of, of it. And I did a little bit of a stint when, I was, um, when my dad had just gotten out of uh, uh, the university and grew up um, on the southeast side of Houston. So I've been a little bit, or I've been around a little bit. Um, I also, by the way, uh, is there anybody here that is currently serving in the military? Anybody? Okay. Uh, um, I uh, served 11 years in field artillery, so uh, I don't hear very well. I'm very proud of my service. Uh, if you know people that serve, give them a hug, a slap on the back. Um, we need them. 
we support them. And uh, uh, I was hoping that maybe at least one of you would, uh, would raise your hand. So, oh, uh, fair enough. What what you what you serve in? Good for you. Good for you. Thank you for your, for your service. Uh, as a matter of useless, useless trivia, I'm a Lego maniac. Um, I've received Legos every year for the last 44 years in Christ for Christmas. I'm looking forward to this Christmas. It'll be the 44th straight year in a row. As a matter of um, cultural reference, um, I am a member of uh, the LDS Church, the dominant uh, religion here in the valley. I only say that um, so that you can kind of get an idea of where I'm coming from. I promise I'm not going to hand out any religious pamphlets at the end of the at the end of the meeting and no missionaries will pound down on your doors, at least not for me. Um, but because of that I have to say I did serve a mission in, uh, in Holland and Belgium. I had the privilege of uh, meeting just about every Dutch man in that country. They all said no. And uh, um, I share that because uh, I was thinking about all the guys that come to my door during the summer. They're selling pest control on and all, all on that. And so I'm, I'm with you. I, I know what it's like to get that, that uh, rejection. But, uh, but still, it's just part of your life. And, uh, and I uh, was always pleased to serve. Uh, there isn't anybody that I can't come in and uh, actually approach and talk to anymore. Uh, not necessarily about uh, religion, of course, but, uh, um, but it really taught me a lot about um, not being afraid to approach a complete stranger about anything. And uh, uh, it served me well, especially uh, uh, in the recent, recent weeks. Um, the outstanding question I think you're going to ask me um, is, well, have you enjoyed any success with your hobbies yet? And I, I'm going to say yes. I've had a lot of fun with the hobbies that I've had over the course of the years. Have they made me rich? No. Um, and, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, but I want to focus more on career than I, than I do on, on, hobby, on hobbies. So uh, um, my uh, career took me when I returned from California, I started doing the startups. Everybody knows what a startup is, right? Well, the, the other side of the startup is the shutdown. And, uh, and uh, I went through a lot of those, and so I didn't get to experience a lot of the success that I wanted to, uh, wanted to experience. A lot of that was out of my control, but nonetheless, it's, it's part of who I am, and, uh, and I've learned from it. And that's really uh, what I, one of the messages I hope to uh, convey to you today is that you just are able to, to, to learn from your experiences, uh, good, bad, and, and otherwise. Okay, so is this working? So my objectives in this pre uh, presentation are uh, hopefully to excite and encourage. How many of you guys actually have a hobby that you're really thinking about maybe turning into a career? Excellent, okay. So I really, hopefully, and I'm not sure, I've been practicing really hard, but uh, hopefully by the time you walk out of here, you will feel excited and, cur and encouraged about the things that, you're, that you think you're going to achieve. Now, I have to tell you, if you walk out here and say, man, you didn't say anything else I already, I already knew about, then I have to ask you, what are you waiting for? You know, if, uh, if, if I can't give you anything else that what you've already heard about, uh, about your ability or your, uh, your opportunity to uh, succeed with your hobby as a career or your interest in a career, then truly, what are you waiting for, right? And I would encourage you to just take that leap of faith. And that's kind of why I gave that religious or that uh, reference to my religious background is that we're going to, you know, we talk about faith a, a little bit and beliefs and inspiration. And that's really, I, I'm a firm believer in that and it'll come up in here. Uh, I hopefully I'll provide useful information. Some of it is a little philosophical. You've already heard it. Uh, you've probably heard it from uh, friends and neighbors and and uh, your instructors. But uh, um, but they really did play an important part for where where how I got to where I'm at. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about the logical stuff. How do I really? start this business? What are the things I really need to do? Um, in, the, in the course of me doing things, I've, I had to ask a lot of questions and hopefully I can answer a few of those so you don't have to go do the digging. Um, I want to share some real experiences, especially about the beehive. And it was a little, well, I, we kind of let the cat out of the bag. I was going to make you guess and find out what, what my hobby was, but yeah, it's beekeeping. So we'll do that. I also want to be a resource. Um, I have business cards. I paid $19.99 for 500 of them. I've got 430 left. No, you know, I get a little, little less than that. But, uh, but I do. I want to be a resource. And so if, please, if, if you really feel like that uh, I can help you um, 
pursue whatever it is your goal is, um, grab the card. Um, I am an email or a phone call away and I don't, I am not afraid of talking to anybody. And so uh, I'd love to hear about some of your ideas and some of your ambitions. So we'll, uh, look, wrong way, oh, isn't he cute? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about hobbies real quick. The definition that I found on the internet, and we know the internet is always true, right? Is that an acti a hobby is an activity or interest pursued for pleasure or relaxation and not as a main occupation. In other, uh, an example, her hobbies include stamp collecting and wood carving, okay? So we're gonna talk about hobbies for just a minute. Just remember the words relax, uh, relaxation and pleasure, okay? Because uh, when you're doing your career, that's not always true, okay? So am I hitting this button right? Yes, okay, my dear friend, Alan Fulmer, best friend ever. Can you still help me see? Am I standing okay still? All right. Alan Fulmer used to work here at UVU too. We sat uh, in the same office. Um, he is my best friend. Alan, a little shout out to you. Um, one day he buys this camera. It's a, it's a Nikon camera and he starts playing with it. This is a number of years ago. This is a shot from one of the, uh, he, we have a, um, a, a common friend, uh, Shane, uh, Shane from uh, Hawaii. He flies the helicopters out there. If you ever get to Hawaii and go to the big island and say, hey, do you know Cody Adams? And he'll say, yeah, and if you know, you know Alan. But uh, this is off the top of the volcano. So Alan's out there taking all these really cool pictures. And last year he buys this, what are those things called? The drones, yes, sorry. He buys this little drone and he flies it like 10 feet away from the, the Angel Moroni at the top of the Timpanogos Temple here in, in uh, Highland, is that right? Okay, and so uh, anyway, so he, did, he takes his picture, right? And he puts it on the internet and about 15 minutes later he gets a call from this, this gallery and they're like, hey, would you be interested in taking photographs of all the temples in North America and we want to create this book and, and we'll sell it through Deseret Book. And so I'm like, dude, this is my friend, man. He's totally famous and I'm like his best friend, you know? <laughs> so, uh, so really it, it started out as a hobby. It started out with a $500 camera and now he, he's becoming a world renowned uh, photographer. Now, if you, uh, Oh, that's my wife asking me uh, how I'm doing with the presentation, so we'll, we'll turn that off. Um, sorry, I love you, honey. Um, anyway, he, he's more humble than I am, and he, he, he'll say, yeah, I just take some pictures, but his work is absolutely beautiful. And it started with just the fact that just, he, just, he bought the camera and he just kind of, he just went with it uh, over a, about a four or five year period. Another one, this is actually my wife that's just trying to call me. She does uh, goat milk soap and uh, lotion. And so this is her, this is her buddy, Fancy. By the way, uh, I hate goats. Okay, and just wanna make that uh, very clear right now. Um, I can't, you can't see it very quick, clear. Can we, can we maybe flip a light off? Maybe get this front, front light off? Excellent, thank you. Um, you can't see them very well, very well, but these, these kids, were they're about to 12 minutes old. Little man's in the back, and this is Daisy in the front. And uh, so she's uh, taking this goat milk. And, you know, I mean, she's out there. You know, I mean, you see her. I bought her uh, coveralls for Christmas. And uh, she's milking the goat. And she's turned that into her hobby and, uh, and her opportunity to make some fun or make some money and uh, enjoy some success. This was a, a little boutique craft fair thing uh, in Woodland Hills last year. She's really artistic. I mean, they just, uh, she does some beautiful work. And so she had some fun with that. Um, this type of goat milk and soap, um, goat milk lotion and soap is becoming very popular. She can go to Park City and sell like a bottle for like a hundred dollars or some dumb thing like that. It's crazy. Um, Okay, so what presentation can be complete with a ba without a baby pig, right? So uh, they mentioned that we, do, we raise pigs. Um, she's about 15 seconds old. Her name was uh, Lucy. Um, I sold her to a gentleman down the street. But I put this picture up here because I'm a programmer, man. I used to come to UVU and I'm all suited up. I got my suit and tie. I'm like, well, I've got to go. I got to go feed my pigs. And they're like, what? You know. And so I got a lot of satisfaction out of this hobby. You know, uh, I love nature, and to be able to participate in the birth of these 13 pigs was just absolutely incredible for me. And uh, so don't, you know, as you get caught up in your careers, don't don't let the cool things slide you by, right? Um, uh, kind of stay in touch with uh, some of those things that are just really neat. Now, 
this is not my career, okay? Uh, but, uh, but nonetheless, I enjoy it. So um, let's talk about careers. And I wanted to put this up because I think it's really important. Uh, first, the definition of a job. A piece of work, especially a specific task done as part of a routine of one's occupation or for an agreed price. For example, he gave him the job of mowing the lawn. And I put this up here because there is a difference between a job and a career. Okay, I think everybody would accept that. We see, when I was here, I used to see these, these, uh, these students, you know, you guys come in, you're working hard to get your degrees, and they're, they're scrubbing toilets, and they're, you know, dumping the trash and all that stuff, and it's like, man, I had that job. I, I just don't want that job. I mean, I, I'll, I'll scoop pig poop all day long, but don't ask me to scrub a toilet, right? And so, uh, so there's a difference between a job and a career. And I hope that you guys, over the course of your, your lifetime, you understand that difference and that you never get stuck with a job, okay? Some jobs you have to do, straight up. Military, all about doing your job, right? Um, but the career is different. So a career, by definition, is a vocation, a calling, work, a life work, a livelihood followed as one's life work, a success in profession. Okay, so these are things that are just all off the internet. Uh, the example is she sought a career as a lawyer. She sought a career as a journalist, as a hospitality manager, okay, as a nurse, as a, what'd you call that, a muscle something or other. What'd you, what'd you say you were going into? The, the nurse practitioner, but you were doing exercise science. That's right. Okay. So uh, uh, she sought or he sh sought a career as a something or else. So my definition then, and feel free to quote me on that, it's Cody Adams. Um, doing those things that bring true satisfaction, happiness, financial success, and the knowledge that I have made a difference. That is my definition of, my, of the career. And uh, what, uh, what this allowed me to do is it allows me to define what is, what is my definition of financial success. I'm not a millionaire. You know, I pay tons of money every year in hay and pig feed and, and, and whatever. I, I, used to, I live in Mona, so I'm, I'm buying gas every four days to come to work, you know. Um, so, so to say that I'm financially successful, well, I must be doing something right because I can afford to do those things, right? But I'm enjoying my life. I'm getting true satisfaction and happiness out of what I'm doing. And most important to me, I have made a difference, okay? Um, you will make a difference in what you write, okay? You can, your, who was the PR guy? You, will, you guys will make differences in your, in your thing. There isn't a person here that can't make a difference in whatever it is you choose to do in your life, okay? Um, and that was important to me. Oh, is that the wrong way? Let's try that again. Okay, so I was a little, I, I wanna get the quotes out of the way. You don't necessarily have to write these down, but the reason they're important to me is that you need to find some statements that make up you. What are the things that you get from your instructors, from your family, uh, the meme off the internet? What's that one thing that's going to define what you believe in and how you're going to behave with uh, uh, society, how you're going to interact with your boss and your, and your clients? What are those things? So here's some quotes really quick. The first one is from a gentleman named uh, Gordon Young. He's in Mona. He's a rancher. We go out and we brand these 400 calves every year. Get a lot of happiness and satisfaction out of that, right? Um, and he said to me one time, well, actually, I was, we, were, we had just finished up this, uh, basically, it was, a, it was a huge day. We'd been moving all these cattle across the range. And, uh, and I'm thinking, I don't want to go back to work. I mean, this is the hardest thing I've ever enjoyed in my entire life. And I don't want to go to work. I'm, I'm bloody head to toe. I've got these $500 stitches right here because a calf you know, caught me just right. And I just did not want to go back to work. And he says, Cody, if you love what you do, you never have to, ta you never have, to have a vacation. Now, I will submit to you that you need to take a vacation. Okay? But you understand the message here. If you love what you do, you never, need, you never, want, to want, you never want to do anything else. Okay? And uh, I caution you because hobbies, we love to do our hobbies. And how do we turn that into a career? How do we do that in such a way that we don't stop enjoying our hobby? 
that our hobby, that, that our career doesn't become work, right? And it will, it will be, it will, that, it will happen on a regular basis, but generally speaking, how do we go to work every day and enjoy our career, right? Okay. Uh, this is a no-brainer. Necessity is the mother of all inventions. We've heard it before. It makes sense. Uh, we wake up one day and say, God, I really wish I had this thing that I could just call people and, oh my gosh, it's called a cell phone and I, I just invented it uh, because somebody needed it. Um, however, with that being said, I had something uh, happen to me. I was uh, actually attending University of San Francisco and my instructor, I, I, I I don't, I'm not doing him justice. I can only remember that his name was Chris. And he walks in the door one day, and, the, and he walks in without saying anything else. And he says, you know what? Nothing's ever really invented. It's just discovered. And that hit me like a brick because I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, you know, if everything is invented, then I have to be an inventor. I have to be really smart. You know, I, ha I, have to I, I have to think up here and stuff. And when he said this, what he was telling me is it's already there. We just haven't found it yet. Okay? We haven't found the solution to this problem or the, we haven't found the answer to this question. And it was, to me, it seemed very empowering because now, well, I don't have to be an inventor, inventor, I just have to identify that thing that I need or that I want and I just got to go find out how to do it. I need to discover it. And so it was very, that was a profound statement for me. Okay, okay so uh, this is from my grandfather. I'm like seven years old, which was like, almost 100 years ago, and uh, he says, Cody, pick one thing and do it better than anybody else. Okay, be the best hospitality person you can be. And I'm picking on these guys because I was talking a little bit earlier. When, you, when, you're in your, in, when you're doing in communications and business management, pick that one thing and do it better than anybody else. If you do it better than anybody else, you're the go-to person. You're the go-to guy, the go-to girl, gal, whatever, whatever. You're the person that everybody can say, hey, if you want that done, you need to go to that, you need to go over there. You need to talk to Cody, because he'll get it done. You know, or Shane, or you know, whatever your name is. What, what's your name? Brandon. You need to go to Brandon, because he's the best at what he does, right? Okay, this was something that I learned at UVU, okay? So, uh, I was in a philosophy class, and the philosophy of the instru inst instructor says, never say I can't, rather say I just, I don't know how. Again, very empowering because when you say I can't, you're saying, oh, I can't. I'm unable to do this. I mean, I'm incapable of doing it. But when you say, I don't know how, now you've empowered yourself to say, I don't know how today, but I can go find out how. And if I can't find out, I can certainly talk to somebody who already knows. And in your, in your generation, and I, forgive me, I don't mean to be so, I, I hope you don't find that condescending. You have tools that are crazy. Google it. I mean, I, when I was your age, it was inconceivable to think that I could find the amount of information that, I, that, we, what, that we have today. Okay, so if you are still saying I can't, stop it. Okay, accept the fact that you don't know how and now you have something that you can remedy. Okay, uh, do it. That's an old one. It's a Nike thing. It's a spinoff. Um, but really, just do it. Like I said before, if you walk out of here and you say, geez, Cody didn't say anything else that I already knew, then what are you waiting for? Do it. Get her done, right? I, I don't know if I can say that on, that, that's actually, I think, uh, copyrighted, so you may have to take that out of thing. Uh, the other thing is if you decide to do it, you gotta be a leader. And uh, I was at a leadership conference in, uh, in Stockton, and James E. Faust, he a, was a member of the First Presidency of, of the LDS Church. He came and he's trying to, he's trying to describe uh, Gordon B. Hinckley. And, and I, I don't know what your uh, affiliations are or, or your background is, but Gordon B. Hinckley was, he was the man. I mean, that guy had vision. Uh, he knew where he was going. And President Faust is trying to just describe this, this Gordon B. Hinckley. And he finally just stops and he thinks for a minute and he raises his hand and he says, a good leader knows where he's going and he takes his people with him. And talk about hitting you like a rock. I'm still working on that one. But if you know where you're going, the people that you are around you, they'll, they'll, they'll go with you. Not sure what's next. Oh, I know what's next. Okay, so the, the last one is be excellent to each other. Does anybody know this? Oh, yeah. 
Okay, I, I forced my daughters to watch Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure last week. It is a classic, 1980s classic. I'm old enough to say that I saw that in the movie theater. It's the dumbest movie ever, okay, until uh, Abraham Lincoln comes up and says, be excellent to each other, right? But how true is that? How true is that? And the reason I put this in is that I had an opportunity about three or four weeks ago to uh, meet uh, Jimmy Shea. Now, he lives up in Park City. He is, uh, if I got the right year right, it's the 2002 Winter Olympic skeleton gold medalist champion. Boy, that's a mouthful, right? Uh, I was working at Bluehost. He comes down to give us a little bit of a pep talk, and he's talking for about 30 minutes. And Jimmy, I apologize if you see this. Uh, I'm not doing you the justice, but he's telling us a little bit of a story. And he's concluded that one of the greatest things, um, points that he makes about uh, his success is to be nice. All right? And the story he shares, and I'm going to totally screw it up, but you can, actually, you can actually go online and see this presentation on YouTube. He talks about... He's in a competition, he's walking down from the track and there's these runners in the snow and I guess the runners are what go underneath the sled and they're probably the most important part of the, of the, uh, the sled because you know without runners you're basically you know, driving a brick down the road I guess. And uh, he knows who they belong to. They belong to a competitor. I believe he said that, they, that the gentleman was from Japan. And he goes and he gives the the uh, the runners back to this competitor and he of course is just uh, forever grateful because you know you can't compete without him but what he thought was really interesting is the other competitors are like what are you doing why are you giving this guy his runners he's the guy we're supposed to beat and in his example he started talking about he he uh, Jimmy goes up to do the his race start you know to go down the track and this uh, this competitor that he'd given the runners back to says hey Jimmy when you go down to turn two, make sure you take it kind of high. And when you go down to turn three, take it kind of low. And so all of a sudden, he's got this guy that he's trying to beat telling him how to win. Okay? Uh, it was phenomenal. Uh, the story, I, I'm, I, I don't want to ruin the stories. There's a couple more. But at the end of the day, his message was just be nice. Right? And so I wanted to throw that in, in, in here. Okay. So let me take just a second and... Uh, if you'll uh, allow me to indulge, I'm not sure how to how to get this to work. So I don't. I'm kind of I'm kind of proud of it, but we'll we'll show you what uh, what I'm what I'm all about on my hobby for just a second. The process is fairly simple. And these enter in from the front in a smaller, more manageable opening. The smaller opening is easier for the guard bees to protect. The entrance can also be fitted with an optional internal gate that can be adjusted to reduce the size of the opening or close it completely. The back contains a built-in feeder that can be filled with water or sweetened solution or simply be left empty. There's no need to store this feeder anywhere else when not in use, and it's located in the back of the hive to discourage water bees. The bee barrel is light and compact, and with handles along the entire length of each side, and you'll notice it doesn't have a top or a base, just two more things you don't have to store when they're not in use. Each ring provides the rigidity and strength required to form the living speed and space for the bee colony. So basic beekeeping skills remain the same. That's not changing a whole lot. You remove the rods to keep the rings together. And then we just quickly separate the rings. And At which point we can inspect the rings. Here's the feeder. Here are a few rings that the bees haven't actually gone out any wax on yet. So I'm going to quickly get down to where they've drawn the honey. So here's a ring. If you notice, the comb is completely encompassed inside this ring. I didn't tear any foundation. There was no burr comb. And there's very little prop list to build up to make it hard for these rings to come apart. And generally speaking, sound like Darth Vader. <laughs> the 
go through the stack inspecting each one of the rings. As we get closer to the front, we'll see even more. They just simply continue doing their work. And like I said, so far, no burk on, which is really kind of annoying for beekeepers. That's what happens when you're 600 feet away is it just kind of feels like you're on a boat, right? So uh, feel free to, for your PR guys to criticize, right? You just take the top for the front and you just put it back on and put the rods back in place. Just like so. These slots are what allow the bees to travel from bee barrel to bee barrel if they're stacked on top of one another. As you see here as I put this back. I'm very excited about the possibilities this new approach to beehive design will bring to the beekeeping community. The prototypes that we showed you today are made of wood. The next and final step is to make them from an alternative material that's more affordable, more durable, lasts longer, and is environmentally friendly. Our goal is to offer an affordable solution that makes beekeeping easier, more affordable, and less labor intensive for generations of beekeepers to come. As you can imagine, producing the tool... Okay, we're, I'm going to go ahead and stop it there. Um, it ultimately um, was the presentation that we um, put together for, um, for Kickstarter. Now, the reason I show that, I guess there's no, there's no question what my, beat, <coughs> but my hobby was, or, or hobby is, right? But I wanted to show this. First of all, it's kind of cheesy, all right? I mean, you got this thing, you feel like you're on, like, on the Titanic or something, right? And, uh, and I was scared to death. I, I, I got to be honest about, I'm, I'm starting this, uh, this, uh, uh, presentation. It's the second time we've tried to do it. It's like, you know, 100 degrees outside. I've got this jacket on that's hotter than heck. I can hardly breathe. And I'm thinking to myself, what am I doing? People are not going to like this, right? And the more I did it, the more I started to realize, well, wait a minute. I actually think I like what I'm doing. And I started becoming comfortable with the idea that other people might like this too. Beekeepers are very fickle people. I mean, we've been doing beekeeping the same way for like 160 years, right? And so, um, so I, I was really nervous about that. And we needed to know soon because I had to pay money out for patents and engineering and stuff like that. And uh, but I got to tell you, I was scared to death of this video. And yeah, it's it's not the best. But Alan's like, let's just do it. Let's just do it we'll, and we'll go for broke. And that's kind of the message I want to share about that, is that whatever you're doing, it's okay to be afraid, all right? Uh, but do it. You know, what, what, the worst thing that's going to happen is you'll fail, and that's not even that big of a deal. I mean, it's not like you're, you know, getting beat up or whatever, right? I mean, uh, I know we don't like failure, but sometimes you learn more from your failures than you do from your successes. Um, this is like the fifth prototype that I built. I felt a lot coming to this point. Um, but, uh, but I got there and, uh, um, and I want to encourage you uh, to do the same. Now, uh, now that I've said that, I got a dis disclaimer. This presentation is really not about my beehive. So when we do, if, uh, if you do have questions, I'll answer the questions about bees, but we'll do it after all the other questions, okay? Because what I want to do is really answer your questions about how you can proceed with uh, with whatever you're trying to endeavor uh, with, right? But I will give you some highlights. Uh, I, I came up with this idea in 2003. Didn't do a thing about it until 2012. In 2012, I started building the prototypes. 2013, I put the Kickstarter campaign up. And 15 minutes later, and it was here at UVU when I turned it on at lunch in 15 minutes had gone to Sydney, Australia and back. And the reason I knew that is because I was getting emails from Sydney, right? Uh, ultimately, uh, we put it on Facebook. Um, I, have B, uh, I have a website and I'm being followed by 46 countries, all of them of which are very interested in what I'm doing, which was important to me because like I said, beekeepers don't like change, 
right? And this is a huge change for beekeeping. Um, the hobbies that you have might have huge changes, okay? And, uh, and you kind of need to know what your audience is, you know, what's the, what is going to be the ultimate impact to, uh, to uh, the people that are going to be participating in whatever my hobby is, it's going to make it my career, right? Ultimately, the Kickstarter campaign itself failed financially, but we were able to, to graph where the interest was. We, we saw that there was a lot of interest in Canada, there was a lot of interest in uh, Australia. I have people uh, asking me questions from Iran and Iraq, of all places, right? Um, a lot of uh, Middle Eastern countries, uh, most importantly, and we'll get into this a little bit, uh, a gentleman started following me from Turkey. And we'll see that, uh, I'll talk about that. Bottom, bottom line was, for me, I got the worldwide acceptance that I, that I wasn't expecting, right? I was just gonna do the US market, and here we are, you know, in, in uh, worldwide, okay? Okay, so I gotta stop for a second and plug these guys. The Small Business Development Center. This is a UVU uh, sponsored center. This is south of Wendy's. So they're just right over here, okay? UVU is here for your success. Okay, and if you don't believe that, I'm really sorry because uh, if um, from the advisors to groups like uh, what Shaney and Sherry are putting together for your career passport, this university is devoted and committed to your complete success to the point that you can go down to this business development, uh, development center and talk to people like Tanner Whedon or Peter Jay and they will, they, they will take, they'll hear you out and they will give you the tools and resources that you need to be successful. The state of Utah wants to see you be successful. You're gonna bring revenue, you're gonna bring jobs, okay, you're gonna bring interest to the state and the governor, the governor, he loves talking about how great the state of Utah is, and it is a great state, and it's great because of the people that are in it and, and the small businesses that are that are occurring and and the way that we uh, support one another. So, so yeah, I have to plug these guys. Now, the reason uh, when I went in the first time, they turned me on to this book, and I'm not going to try to pimp the book. Can I say that? Okay, I'm not going to try to push the book, but it's called Nail It then scale it, okay? It's $20, I'll do it, I haven't read it for a couple months, so I'm gonna do a lousy job of summarizing. But that book put me on the right track for the, to actually turning my hobby into a career, okay? And we, I mean, we could talk for hours about this, but the Small Business Development Center has a course that you take, it's a couple of hours, you read the book, there's a workshop that you, that you go through, you, you, there's some paperwork you fill out, you identify what they call the pains, you know, what, what pains are you trying to, to solve, right? And so that starts to get into the, kind of the nuts and bolts of how to really get your, your, your hobby turned into a business, right? Now we talk about career, but this is really, my career is my business, you know, I, I, want, to, I want to make money, I want to make a difference, okay? For me, ultimately, I don't know if I'll be a millionaire, but if this beehive works for me, I get to say I started it, right? How cool is that, right? Okay, so anyway, I strongly encourage you to consider going down there and, talk, and talking to them about the book. It's also available at the Woodbury, and I can't remember the department. If you go wandering over there and mention this book, uh, somebody will know what you're talking about. But, but serious, for those who are really serious about starting a business and, and starting a career on your own, go to the Small Business Development Center. Um, right now we're in the middle of uh, applying for some funding uh, that's available through the state of Utah. They, they are not making it too hard to, to uh, be successful in this great state. Um, okay, so what I've learned so far, and this is, I, I, I know we've talked a lot, a little, you know, kind of philosophical, I gave you all those really cool quotes and stuff, but this is really kind of what I've learned that hopefully uh, that, uh, you will be able to pick up a little quicker because of, uh, because of this. Sometimes, like I said, it's not about money, okay? Take the good with the bad. Um, I'm on a bunch of blogs, and I got a lot of a lot of good uh, uh, responses to my beehive, except for this one guy in Thailand. And I can't wait to go out there and shake his hand one day. He says, "There's no way this guy can be a beekeeper. His suit isn't dirty enough." Okay, I'm like, "What?" My dad bought that suit for me for birthday, and I'd like worn it like once, right? 
Uh, but somehow that equated to there's no way he could be a beekeeper because I'm just too clean, right? Um, so, so, uh, but I had to take the good with the bad. There was some criticism. And I started to realize, as I'm 24-7 I'm I'm responding to emails on Facebook about how things worked and what my business plan was looking like and how I was going to ship to New Zealand and all this stuff. And I started to realize, I don't have to take this personal. Um, a lot of these people, they just want to know because they're about to commit to you money. They want to, they want to make sure that they're getting some, some value out of it. And I started to realize, if I don't take it personally, it's really just what it is. It's constructive criticism, and it was really easy to swallow. And for me, I, I take things a little personally. Okay. The other thing, be an inspiration to others. Okay. Um, I love talking about my bees. We could talk about that till the cows come home. But uh, we're here to talk about what you you want to do. And one of these days, you're going to bump into somebody while you're while you're out doing your thing, and they're going to have an idea that they want to pursue. Get excited about it because when you get them excited you get it really excited, right? And that's, part of the, that's probably the biggest challenge, I think, when you're trying to go off on your own, is you're scared to death, you don't know everything you, that you feel like you need to know, and you gotta remain motivated. And I found that, at least for me, I stay motivated when I can motivate others. And so be an inspiration to others. Be willing to accept that some of the ideas are really actually bad ideas. When I was a kid, yes, Cindy. Okay, thank you. Uh, when I was a kid, I raised black widows. Not necessarily the kind of hobby that uh, you're going to turn into a career, right? So uh, some ideas are kind of bad, all right? And your hobby may be one of them. It may be a great hobby, but not necessarily a career opportunity. And you need to, you need to be willing to, uh, to make that decision early so you don't have catastrophic events uh, uh, later. Learn how to delegate. Give up control, but don't lose control. Um, I had a hard time with that. I got to the point I couldn't do everything, but I didn't want anybody else doing it. So now I'm like, can't go anywhere. And I was able to relinquish some of that control and say, okay, I need you to do this for me. And there are people that, uh, when I built my team, um, they, uh, uh, they were able to do that for me and, uh, and, and we get things done a lot quicker. Um, I still wonder if I'm on an adventure, if I'm really on a business, right? It doesn't, uh, I really had no idea where I'd end up. You really don't know where your journey will take you. And I hope that uh, in your endeavors, it takes you to wonderful places. I'm gonna brag a little bit for me. Uh, last, this last September, I ended up in Istanbul. One of the guys that saw my Facebook thing from Turkey says, hey, we wanna see your product. And I took that leap of faith and I went out and I went to Turkey. And, uh, and uh, these two gentlemen right here became very good friends of mine. This is our, my translator. And I showed them the beehive. And after about an, an hour or two, they're like, okay, uh, when you get back, we want 100 of them. We'll test them this year and we'll see, we'll see how they do. Uh, a little, little encouraging. You know, uh, uh, later in the week, I went to Kiev in, in uh, Ukraine. And again, I, I am kind of bragging, but I got to tell you, it's all part of the journey, right? It's all part of what, what keeps us excited about what we're doing. This is Katya uh, Yershenko, a wonderful woman. Uh, as you can see, she's, she's hosted me. She uh, spent three hours uh, uh, telling me about Kiev and Ukraine, uh, gave me a, a traditional dinner. Her husband uh, was the second uh, the former president of the Ukraine. So I'm like literally eating lunch with the first lady of the Ukraine, right? And we're just having a normal conversation. She's actually from Chicago, but her parents were, um, uh-oh, her parents are from Ukraine. When I'm f coming back, I'm landing in New York for my trip, and you know, the beehive is a little bit about the technology we want to put in it. And I, I'm like walking down the gangplank, and I'm like, holy crap. How appropriate is this? I got a, a, fly, a, a bee with the glasses that look like uh, camera lenses and a statement that says nature and technology will work as one. It was very, it was probably a little coincidence, but very encouraging. And you're going to find that. You're going to find that whatever, when you're doing things and you, and you got that good karma going on, things start to fall in place, right? <laughs> Any opportunity you have, take it. Take it and run with it. It may be a dead end, but you don't know unless you take it, right? Don't give up. I've been doing this since 2012. My, I started the idea in 2003. It's 2015 already, right? But don't give up. Don't expect it to be easy, okay? I know you guys have heard these before, but uh, I'm gonna, they're just important. Don't think that your Kickstarter campaign will be successful. 
okay? Uh, there are other opportunities to, to pay for the things that you are going to pay for. It's, you know, even school, I mean, sometimes you get the, the Pell Grants and the finance, and sometimes you don't, but you still get, you still get done with your education, okay? Uh, the dues, write down what you want to accomplish, okay? Have a plan. Have a mission statement. Exit strategies are important. What, where am I going with this? What do I, what, how do I want to end up? Do I, am I going to sell this thing? Am I going to hand it off to my kids? You know, what, what is it that I really want to achieve over the course of, the, of the, uh, the, this career opportunity? Write down what you have accomplished. Like I said before, do your research. Now, and we talk about Google, and, uh, and that's a good place, but just make sure your eyes are crossed and your, no, no, that's not right. Your eyes are dotted and your T's are crossed. Um, develop and plan, follow a plan of, of, of execution, but make sure the plan is flexible enough that if you need to change, you can, okay? Build a team, all right? You can't do it by yourself. Trust in others. Don't be, an, don't be a pushover. There's a lot of people that will take your idea from you, but the team you build, you need to trust them. You need to, you need to trust that they want to do the, what's best for you. Okay, really important, re rely on what inspires you. Okay, and we'll talk about that a little bit more um, if we have time. Be willing to spend money. This prototype right here cost me $1,700. Okay, um, but I, you know what, I'm on my way. And, uh, and I finally learned, in order to make money, you gotta spend it. You need to be willing or able to change, is another thing that I've learned. Uh, most importantly, you need to be patient, okay? And if, uh, as students, you, if you haven't learned that already, you need to learn it quickly. Um, okay, so about inspiration and belief, uh, and then we'll, we're almost done, Sydney. Uh, Cindy, my daughter, Sydney, sorry. Uh, I debated throwing this in, but if you believe in a God, Take full advantage of that, okay? Um, believe in your family. My grandfather, do one thing and do it better than anybody else. You know, you might have a grandmother or an aunt or an uncle that inspires you. Latch on to that. Be grateful for the, they're passing that information down to you and that wisdom. If you've got a close friend, Alan Fulmer, again, pushes me all the time to believe in myself. And more, most importantly, believe in yourself. Okay, you can do it. I don't care who you are. If I can do it, you can do it, okay? You need to know who you are and what you believe in, all right? I, I don't, hopefully, I, I'm not on a pedestal too much, but I really, I'm sitting in Istanbul. I'm the only guy that speaks English. I've lost half my luggage, and I'm like, what am I doing here? And then I remembered, I know what I'm doing here, and it was a successful trip. Uh, you, need to ha you need to be convicted. People are gonna put you in a room and say, you want how much money? And you need to be able to look them right in the eye and say, I need it for this, and this is what I'm gonna do to, uh, this is what I'm gonna do with it, and this is how I'm gonna pay you back. You need to be, con you need to be convicted. You need to believe in what, that what, whatever you're gonna do, do will be successful. You need to be capable. You need to believe in others, okay? Um, okay, so real quick, the last, I think this is the last slide, the real stuff, okay? Legal entity. You need to get with a CPA or, or an attorney and you need to decide, this is what I'm going to try to do legally and how's the best way to organize that, right? A uh, big uh, common one is this, is this uh, LLC, a limited li liability corporation or whatever. Um, real quick. You go to IRS, you apply for your EIN, then you go to the state corporation, uh, corporations.utah.gov, you apply for your LLC, you register for your LLC, it's $75 to, to, to uh, apply. Um, very easy to do. I will caution you though, once you do this, you're on the hook. Because every, uh, now that you have an entity, you have to file that pa paperwork annually and for me it's about 50 bucks so you're committed right and you cannot tell the IRS you forgot I did that one time and it, they sent me a five thousand uh, dollar courtesy uh, what do they call that um, fee I got out of it but uh, but you just got to play by the rules okay but but truly I didn't know this I paid an attorney 500 bucks to do this for me and then I find out crap I could have done this for free this cost me 75 bucks and I went down and got a bank account in 15 minutes Right? You can do that yourself. And if you do it, you can understand it, okay? Uh, web presence, kind of obvious. We did social media. I'll skip that one. 
Okay, business cards and logos. They sound a little cheeky, but one thing I learned, and I, bought, I brought these in here, I, I was really reluctant to give the business cards out because I'm like, eh, okay, I'm, okay, I'm playing, you know. Well, now I give them out to everybody because I had that conviction and I had that confidence to say, you know what, yeah, be scientific, I'm the owner. I'm going places with this. And it's such a little thing. It's 1995, right? But it built, it boosted my confidence and it really gives, lends credibility to, uh, to what you're doing, right? So don't discount these kinds of things, you know. Don't spend your money wisely, but, but uh, I, rec I recognize early that that's kind of an interesting thing. Patents, that's, that's another story. My patent so far has cost me $4,500. I have an international patent, I filed it. We have until the end of April or end of October to finish it. You may not need a patent, okay? But these are the things that you have to consider. And you need to get the proper advice from the proper people, okay? I filed my initial patent through LegalZoom, cost me 250 bucks, and uh, the attorney complimented me on how well I did, and then he charged me $400 an hour to fix it. So uh, crowdfunding, Kickstarter, like I said, Kickstarter, you set, it a, you set an amount, and you have to hit that amount, or you don't get anything. Indiegogo, you can set an amount, and, what, and at the end of the term, whatever you get, that's what you, that's what you earn. But you have to remember, you're getting that money from people who really expect something back, okay? Don't screw them, right? And so, uh, when you're doing your research, make sure that you understand what this crowdsource funding is about and how to really leverage it. Uh, I put Kickstarter up and with, I, it took 15 minutes to go to Sydney and back. It took eight minutes for everybody to start calling me, telling me how they can do all this great work for, you know, 500 bucks here, 500 bucks there. You're going to get a lot of spam uh, along the way. But this, this is the new age and it works. And you may need it, you may not, okay? Uh, the other thing I learned is it's going to take a while. All right, get your ducks in a row, be patient, uh, be persistent, uh, and all those other cliches and stuff, but you'll get there. And, uh, and you will enjoy the success you expect. The end, okay? I really want to be a resource. Um, I hope that uh, what I've shared today has uh, been beneficial. If you do have questions, and I've, we're kind of out of time, you can reach me here, grab my business card. I would love to hear about what you're doing and, and hopefully answer some questions.